Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 10 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 9, I told you about heterogeneous equilibria. In this video, I am going to solve this one solved example to explain when you have a heterogeneous equilibrium, that is an equation in which the reactants and the products, their, the physical states are not the same of all the reactants and products. How do we calculate the equilibrium constant for such an equilibrium? So let us solve this example and uh, this would make it clear to you how we use even quadratic equations to solve these problems. In part 8, I did some problems about homogeneous equilibrium. In that also we use the same method. The only difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibria is that in heterogeneous equilibrium, when you have pure solids and pure liquids, you drop those quantities. You do not consider their concentrations. The reason being that pure solids and pure liquids have a 100% concentration. That is, all the molecules are of that substance. So when, you, when they are pure, it doesn't make sense of talking of their concentration. Concentration means how many parts of this particular substance are present in a mixture, that is in a, let us say in a solution, how many moles of a solute may be present. So when you have pure solids and liquids, they are absolutely pure, 100%. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to include their concentrations because their concentrations are constant. So let us solve this problem. The value of Kp for this reaction, that is carbon dioxide gas, plus carbon solid to give you two carbon monoxide gas is 3.0 at 1000 Kelvin. We know equilibria are established at fixed temperatures and in this case the temperature is 1000 Kelvin. And the value of Kp is given to us that is 3. So now what are we expected to find out? If initially the concentration of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide was 0.48 bar, and the partial pressure of carbon monoxide, which is the product, was zero. So we, he has given us the initial concentration that we started with, where we only had the reactants, right? And zero bar and pure graphite is present. Now, pure graphite, it doesn't make any sense to talk of its, uh, of its concentration because it's a solid. You have to calculate the equilibrium partial pressures of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So the value of Kp, that is equilibrium constant in terms of pressure is given to us. The initial pressures are given to us. We are expected to find out the pressures at equilibrium, the pressures of the reactants and the products at equilibrium. So how do we do this? We first write down the equation CO2 gas plus carbon solid now, this is the reason why we write the physical states, because when you're writing physical states, it helps you to identify which are the components that you would use in the, equilibri in the uh, calculation of the what equilibrium constant and which are the values or which are the uh, things that you would not be putting into the uh, equilibrium constant equation. Now, for this, let us say the initial concentration is given to us. Yes. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide initially. So, initial pressure, initial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.48 bar. And the initial pressure of carbon monoxide, which is the product, was 0 bar. Right? Now, it means that we had the pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.48 bars. If some amount of carbon dioxide is used up during the reaction, the pressure of carbon dioxide will decrease because the number of molecules of carbon dioxide have decreased. So let us assume that by the decrease of a certain amount, whatever is used up to make carbon monoxide, if the pressure decreased by uh, X bars, then the pressure at equilibrium for carbon dioxide or equilibrium pressure for carbon dioxide would be 0 0.48 minus x bar you know do you get this if the initial pressure was 0 0.48 bars and some of the carbon dioxide was used up to form carbon monoxide then let us say that whatever be the number of moles of this that was that decreased that was removed from it was x 
then the concentration decreased by x and similarly the pressure if we were talking in terms of pressure those many molecules were removed therefore that much of pressure was also removed so the final pressure or equilibrium pressure becomes a decreased pressure of 0.48 minus x bars if we talk in terms of concentration one mole of carbon dioxide produces two moles of carbon monoxide so whatever pressure one mole of a gas is producing for carbon dioxide that was used the amount of carbon monoxide produced was two moles so the amount of pressure being exerted by two moles would be double of that right so if x moles of carbon monoxide uh, are used up then how many moles of carbon monoxide would be formed two moles so if x bar pressure was used up or removed from uh, carbon dioxide how many bars of pressure would increase for carbon monoxide or how many bars of pressure would, would be formed for carbon monoxide it would be twice that amount because for every one mole there is two mole so for every one bar there should be two bars of pressure double the amount so if x was used up here then the amount of pressure of carbon monoxide should be 2x so the equilibrium pressure of carbon monoxide would be 2x right now we've got the equilibrium uh, pressures of both the uh, carbon dioxide reactant and carbon monoxide at the product and carbon since it's a solid we ignore it so in the next step we find out the equation for kp so what is kp kp would be equal to the concentration of the product that is c sorry we are talking of partial pressures not concentration so in terms of partial pressure equilibrium constant would be pressure of carbon monoxide to the power of 2 because that is its stoichiometric coefficient divided by the pressure of carbon dioxide right the partial pressure of carbon monoxide divided by the partial pressure square of it divided by the partial pressure of carbon dioxide so if we put these values in these terms kp would become equal to what is the pressure equilibrium pressure of carbon monoxide it is 2x so it would be 2x square and let me remind you kp in the question is given to us which is 3 so i write that here 3 is equal to kp so kp is equal to 3 is equal to 2x square 2x whole square upon what is the pressure of carbon dioxide 0. 48 minus x bars right now this becomes equal to you can make an equation out of this now ignore this and you're using this equation to find out the value of x so if you take keep 2x here 2x square becomes 4x square would be equal to take these terms here if you'll get 3 into 0. 0.48 minus x now 4x square then would be equal to 3 into 0 0.48 comes out to be equal to 1.44 1.44 minus 3x now we can make a quadratic equation out of this how you have 4x square plus bring this here bring all the terms here plus 3x minus 1.44 Four, 4 is equal to 0 right now what is the whenever you have an equation of this kind that is a x square plus b x minus c equal to 0 now look at this equation it is similar to this one so for the values of a b and c we can use these values so a in this equation what is a a is 4 what is b b is 3 and what is c c is minus 1.44 right we get all the three values when you have an equation like this you can find out the value of x by the formula x is equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac upon twice a 
By writing this equation, you can calculate the value of x. Now, this is the quadratic equation, and this is how you can solve. You can solve it for the value of x. So, if we put these values in this equation, how do we so get x? x now, substituting these values, b is minus 3 plus minus under root of b square would be 3 square minus 4 into a is 4 into c is minus 1.44, right? And the square root of this divided by 2a, twice a. Now, oh sorry, I have to write the value of a also. a is 4, yes, so 2 into 4. Doing this, we see we find minus 3 plus minus, and when you solve all of this, the value you get is 5.66, divided by 2 fourths are 8. Now, you can have two solutions for this value. For whenever you have this equation, you get two solutions. One, when you use a plus sign here, and one, when you use a minus sign. If you use a plus sign here, you will get the difference between the two. But if you use this minus sign, minus 3 minus 5.66 would be a negative value. And the pressure, the partial pressure of a gas or X was, what was X? X was the partial pressure. So the partial pressure of a gas cannot be a negative value. Therefore, obviously, we cannot have that solution where you get the answer to be a negative value. So we choose the one where you get an answer as the positive value. How would that be when we have this as plus? So minus 3 plus 5.66 upon 8, which is equal to minus 3 plus 5.66 upon 8 is the solution that we use. And this will be minus 3 plus 5 would be 2.66 upon 8, which would be equal to, if you solve this, this comes out to be equal to 0 0.33. So from this, we come to know that the value of x, that is uh, the amount of uh, or the pressure of carbon dioxide that decreased was 0 0.33. Once we know x, we know that the equilibrium pressures of uh, carbon, di carbon monoxide is 2x and carbon dioxide is 0 0.48 minus x. So substitute the value of x in these and calculate the uh, equilibrium pressures of both carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So let us first find out the equilibrium pressure. Pressure of carbon monoxide is 2x which is equal to 2 into what is x? 0 0.33 which is equal to 0 0.66 right 0 0.66 bar we start with the bars so that's the pressure and what would be the pressure of carbon dioxide now carbon dioxide is 0 0.48 minus x so it will be equal to 0 0.48 minus 0 0.33 which would be equal to 0 0.15 bar right so this is how you would solve this problem so in heterogeneous equilibria basically whenever you're for trying to find out the equilibrium concentrations, you will solve the equation by assuming the amount dissociated to be x and then solve it for a quadratic equation that you would get and then get your values for the equilibrium uh, pressures or equilibrium concentrations. So this was question 7.6 6, and uh, with this I end this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.